we are getting around to the idea of noticing that we have a total environment which is necessarily acoustic and uh, not visual. The whole electric environment is totally invisible. And so people are now becoming quite sensitive to the fact that they live in non-visual environments. And um, politically, socially, psychologically, they take inner trips rather than outer trips. The inner trips people take are the same trip that you take in the process of hearing, the normal process of hearing. If I were to say to you uh, four words, you will all know the fifth because, because it's stored in your mind. If I say things go better with... Coke. You say Coke because you've had that experience. If I say for the rest of your... Life. You, you know that because of your experience with the language. So these are the inner trips McLuhan is speaking about, not some drug-related trip. For instance, if I say the word, <laughs> word, and you'd find that by the time I get to the D on the erd, all the rest of it is gone. But it's recalled in your mind. The brain has the ability to record these vibrations, to recall previous ones, and to expect future ones. You know, this all takes place in your head. And the meaning of it can be different for different people because you find that it goes in at electric speed, and if it clicks onto something you've experienced before, you bring that out. It's evoked and it comes out. I'm going to play two tapes that are identical except for the last word and I'm going to play them to one person and you see how she's going to not, not only go through the normal filling in that she does in the process of hearing but she goes into her computer for her stored experience with the subject being talked about, with the product being talked about, and she comes out with a new content, a different content for the two commercials based on her experience with the two products. So the lawyer, a lawyer would say that the scripts are identical, the content is identical. But listen to this woman. You can learn about prostitution in New York in a probing series of articles starting Monday in the New York Post. I, I would just suppose that it would be a, a, a sensational, uh, scandalous sort of uh, pseudo-documentary. I, I, my guess is that it would just be something that would exploit uh, prostitution and sell papers. You can learn about prostitution in New York in a probing series of articles starting Monday in the New York Times. Oh, I feel that one would be um, a study, um, more of a, a sociological document, something I could, uh, something I could uh, rely on as being informative and, and filled with data. If a lawyer wants to check the content of a commercial, he will want to see the script, but the content is really a resonance between the stimuli or what people hear and their reaction. We're dealing with uh, evocative media, with electronic media, with radio and TV. So we have a resonance between the stimuli that people hear or the sound or the words that people hear and the stored material in their minds. One of the major changes that's come into the world with the electronic environment is that the audience becomes workforce instead of being target for campaigns. So as McLuhan says, the audience becomes a workforce. We're using them to go into their associations to the things we're dealing with. There's a concept in communication that goes back to Aristotle that says that persuasion is enthymematic. What that means is audiences participate in creating the communication. You don't hand a message to someone for maximum impact. You let the audience invest itself in the message, and that co-creative process gives you your highest level of persuasion. 
More recently, we've learned that to the extent that you can involve the audience, you'll have long-term effects rather than short-term effects with persuasion. Now, Tony hasn't read Aristotle. He hasn't read the communication literature, but he's developed the concept of responsive chord from his experience listening to audiences. Now, many people know that concept and then don't practice it. They hand people messages as if you're supposed to swallow a whole message instead of help create it. Tony's messages involve listeners and viewers in intricate, subtle dance that ultimately leaves you in a partnership. And so, in the typical Schwartz message, you're left feeling very involved, and you're also left with powerful residual impact.